Welcome to Ask Sean, where I explore all sorts of questions about life, relationships, and being human. I'm Sean Slevin, a licensed professional counselor and a licensed marriage and family therapist. And if you have a question for me, you can submit that anonymously at askshawn.org. So in this video, I'm obviously not at my desk. I'm sitting on the couch that usually you see in the background. Uh, and that's because I'm getting to do an interview today with some JMU students, Alexa and Charlie. And we're going to be talking about sex, a topic that um, in a lot of ways our culture loves to talk about, but also can be very uncomfortable with. So um, yeah, we'll see where we go. It's, this might be one really long meandery video, or um, I might cut this into several smaller videos for the YouTube channel. Um, but uh, glad you, the viewer, are here. And uh, yeah, let's begin. So yeah, I know that kind of, you know, some one of your kind of a couple of your initial questions were, um, yeah, thinking about kind of how important is sex, yeah. and um, and also it kind of it felt related to me kind of this question of um, when when should a couple uh, move towards having sex uh, in their relationship and um, yeah, and I, these feel intertwined. To me, I uh, I do think that sex is important, but that I think requires a lot of qualifying uh, because there's ways that we can make it too important, maybe for certain stages of relationship. Uh, and so I think that's I guess that's why I kind of it feels related to the other question about timing is you know where where what where is a relationship at so. And I guess I, I guess a general principle I, I, I would suggest is that the earlier in a relationship uh, one is is in, um, the more cautious I think we should be about moving towards sex. Um, yeah, and that that warrants a lot of unpacking. Um, but I, I guess my first thought on that is. You know, sex is so special and so powerful, um, psychologically, energetically, I would argue even spiritually, uh, that we want to be mindful of that we're not misusing it, that we're not, uh, like, you know, the earlier we are in a relationship, that there can be a temptation to want to rush to sex as a way of trying to somehow secure a depth and the length of relationship that we haven't actually developed yet. Mm -hmm. um, and so I think that's, that's really a really dangerous thing to do. Um, dangerous in the sense of like we can do harm to ourselves and to others. Uh, we can inadvertently be using others uh, and be using ourself uh, in a way or allowing ourselves to be used um, because we're not sitting with the vulnerability and discomfort of um, kind of those early stages. I mean, early stages of relationship are really exciting, but they're also they're also uncertain, right? Like, are we? Is this going to be my forever person, right? Um, and and we you know we have this this tension within us of we we long for adventure, but we also long for security. We long for kind of the exploring the world, but also sort of having those home hearth fires to like come back to you and be safe and have uh, constancy. And so I think that we have to be really careful that we're not shortcutting that struggle. Like this is a human struggle that in some ways we will always grapple with. Um, I think I, this is a tricky thing about you know, movies and, and stories in our culture. And, and there's lots of great movies and stories and I've, you know, I've, I enjoy many of them, but sometimes they can give us simplistic versions of, of how a relationship can unfold. Right. Like, um, I mean, you know, Disney, right? Like Cinderella, Sleeping Beauty, you know, like all these classic fairy tales. It's like, and they lived happily ever after, you know, there's not, <laughs> um, you know, there's there, there's no just talking about like the challenge of of um, continuing to wrestle with this tension of the human need for exploration and adventure and risk taking, and the human need for constancy, for safety, for stability, um, and 
and that it doesn't ha it's not a one or the other but they are in tension with each other uh, and it's learning how to, to, to work with that tension and be with that tension that I think is, is really key for, um, for meaningful relationships and is, is, is really key in the sexual relationship. Because uh, the, the sexual relationship is a place where we play out uh, a, a lot of this. Uh, not the only place, but, but certainly it is a place. It's, it's, a, it's a place, I guess, that, that um, a couple's struggles with this tension are going to be manifest. Um, so, yeah, so I think that, I do think that sex is important. Uh, I think, so maybe I'll say, say this, to say that uh, the more established, more long-term, the, the, the more of a commitment, an expressed, developed, um, embodied commitment that a couple is making to each other, um, and it maybe warrants coming back to kind of thinking about what does that mean and how do we signify that. But the, the more that a couple is in that kind of place um, relationally, uh, then sex is like, a, it's a logical outflow of um, the life that we are weaving together. Um, and, and that's maybe, that, that's maybe a helpful piece too, to, 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 to really be mindful of, you know, because sex is so unitive, it's so bonding uh, and, and sort of binding us together, we can mistake it for like, oh, well, I can just build a relationship on sex uh, because it is very powerful. Like it's, 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 um, it, it, it calls forth our whole person, you know, like we, it's not just that we're physically naked with another. It's like, whether we mean to or not, there's kind of a soul nakedness that, that happens there. And, and that's beautiful, but also can be kind of terrifying, right? Like, I mean, it's just, that's, it's, there's a lot, there's a lot of power here. There's a lot of energy here and, you know, a lot sort of being exchanged psychologically, relationally, spiritually. Um, and so in the context of an established relationship where, where a couple has done the hard work and they've taken the time to build safety, to build connection, to, to b build co commitment, to, have ways that they are signifying commitment, you know, which traditionally would, would be in the context of marriage. Um, you know, we're in a point in history where, you know, that may not be the only way that people do that, perhaps, but, um, and, and it's worth kind of maybe for us, yeah, again, might circle back to kind of reflect a little bit about sort of traditional patterns and, you know, kind of where we are now, but, um, but yeah, again, it's like we, we don't want to mistake in the, the power of sex to, to unite and to bond um, for therefore let's rush to that at the beginning. Um, now I don't say this in any kind of, I mean, sex is such a vulnerable thing and it feels good and our bodies can like, you know, kind of, we can be caught up, right. You know, in, um, in, 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 an, in an encounter with someone and so I, you know, we can, it's so easy to have so much shame around this. So, uh, which is one of the tricky things about even talking about it, right? So, like, I'm, I'm trying to paint some, you know, some big picture and, you know, kind of, you know, kind of philosophical, psychological um, principles here. Uh, but I want to be mindful that, you know, folks listening to this are, you know, coming from any number of life experiences and, um, yeah, that there can be, there can be shame coming up in some of the kinds of things that I'm saying. And I, that's... I'm not saying in the, any of this and like, oh, shame on you, you know, kind of thing. It's like, we're all human, you know, and we all are trying to do the best we can. And, um, and, and also I'm a fellow human. I don't have like the exact, like, you know, um, you know, I'm figuring things out too. Right. You know, so it's not like, this is the word of Sean that is, you know, unerring or whatever it's like well these are these are my musings today you know and i might have a better a little better articulation tomorrow and hopefully a bit better a month or you know six months or a year from now uh so i hope these can be helpful but you know if these are you know for the viewer if they're bringing up shame like i just you know please hear that's that's not my yeah. you know my intent my, my, my and that's not my heart towards uh towards anyone um at the same time it's worthwhile for us to explore well what do we aspire to you know um and sometimes as we engage what we aspire to that can mean ah well oh maybe i do have some regret about some things 
um, you know, or maybe I've got, maybe this elicits, you know, that I've got trauma I need to deal with, you know, in terms of things I've suffered. And so, so, well, like I should attend to that, you know, um, those are, those, those are important because each of us is important. Um, so it just, yeah, feels important for me to name that, you know, as we, as we continue into the weeds here a bit, um, or you know, weeds isn't the way I mean, because <laughs> that sounds negative, but I just mean, as we go deeper into the forest, <laughs> that's a better analogy. Um, so yeah, so I want to, I do want to reflect for a moment on kind of some kind of traditional perspectives on all this, because I think they do shed a little bit more light on why I would suggest folks waiting, waiting longer as opposed to being quicker to having sex. Um, this is going to be just very, very light touching on history. Um, so it's not, it's, you know, it's no, I'm not saying anything re revelatory to point out that historically uh, in many cultures, um, sex has been, uh, at least what's been prescribed is that sex has been reserved for, for, for the context of marriage or some, what something like, like marriage. Um, now, whether we agree with that or not, um, I think it's, it's it's worth reflecting on. Okay, why why would so many cultures choose to do that? Now, there's we can you know we can go down rabbit trails about um, you know things to do with progeny and like ensuring heirs and you know like who's going to inherit property and so there's all that stuff that I'm not going to begin to try to unpack. Um, the one little piece that I want to tease out is that um, I do think that what having some sort of culturally sanctioned institution does not that it's perfect you know there are no perfect things in this world um but it it does provide a container um and so i think that's that's something for us to draw from again there's you know there's lots of mixed things about human history and how we've done things and various traditions um and that's way beyond the scope of you know what we're gonna have time for today um but in counseling, we, we have this idea about building a container with a client uh, to do hard work in. Um, and part of that is just even like the consistency of the counseling room. Um, that's got more tricky, you know, as more and more counseling is being done online and whatnot. But, but even there, you know, it's like for me, you know, just even I'm, you know, even if I'm doing a counseling session online from home, like I still get into my work clothes. Like that's part of my supporting the container of like i'm getting into the mode of i'm going to be doing a session with someone and i need to be like emotionally available and i need to be grounded not distracted um like i and i want to like you know even just setting up my computer in a way that like i don't have like notifications popping up and whatnot and so all of that is protecting it's protecting the relationship and protecting the space um for for change to happen in and so i think that principle relates to how we think about sex because it is it is so powerful um you know it, it it's is um you know it's very bonding it's it's very intimate um it's also biologically the way that we make new humans which i mean like to stop and think about that like holy fuck i mean <laughs> like holy fuck we can make new humans like i, I mean we take that for granted right like but it's just to to stop and think about it it's like that's such a wild thing like that somehow that like two humans can engage in this act together and there can be this this meeting of genetic material you know that like then can become another human and not that that is going to is possible or going to happen in every um act of sexual intercourse but but the fact that it can happen right is and it is another thing that harkens to like, this is like a powerful mystical thing, even though we can like, you know, explain all the science of it and we can dissect the cells and da, da, da. like, you know, we, we need to not let that, all of that data, like, um, numb us to like, this also is, feels kind of, it's kind of magical. It's kind of, it's kind of amazing. Um, cause it's not just that like, we make a human in the sense of like okay here's another like machine it's like no this is a human because it becomes their own person i mean each of us is the product of this right like each of us is uniquely different in our combination of personality mix and background and you know our genetics and our strengths and our weaknesses and like um i mean i was at a conference over the weekend and 
meeting different people and stuff. And I like complimented someone on their beard and they were complimenting me on mine. And I'm thinking, well, you have a lovely beard, but they're like, oh, but your beard is this, that, and the other. Um, which I'm, the point of this isn't like my amazing beard, but, it, but it's just a fascinating thing. I mean, I did, I've done nothing for this, but just let it grow. <laughs> like this, I inherited this. This is just a, yeah. this is a thing that is a gift of my genetics and like, but it's a make, it's a part of the makeup of who I am. And like, what an amazing thing that like, I exist at all, that you exist at all. Mm -hmm. Like, so, so that's, that is, even though not every act of sex or every sexual, you know, experience is going to lead to a new human, like some sexual experiences can. And so that's another aspect of like, wow, this is a, this is a big thing. Like we, I guess I would argue we ought not to take it lightly. Um, and again, it's not, I don't mean this in any kind of shaming way, but just inviting us to value ourselves more. I think, I think in, you know, kind of the past hundred years, you know, our culture has, has rightly been critiquing a lot of things about history and, and various traditions and whatnot that, where there's, you know, there can be oppression and suppression and all sorts of like not terribly healthy relating to, um, to sexual energies, to sexuality, to, um, to women, right? Um, and so it's like, there's a lot of corrective stuff that is needed there. Um, but some of what we've lost along the way um, is that like, this is a really wonderful, powerful thing that it, it really, it is so, um, it can be so deeply um, bonding and meaningful and nurturing um, in the context, in the, in the adequate container of a, uh, an established relationship, a, a sufficiently established relationship. Um, so all that to say, uh, in terms of thinking about timing of sex, I would encourage folks to, to wait, to wait, to err on the side of waiting. Um, you know, it, the, the symbol of something like marriage is, I think, a thing we need to acknowledge there, that even though that's like sort of what human history has, you know, shown that humans have tended to do, that doesn't guarantee things, right? I mean, we have, we have plenty of examples of people who got married and they did not do their sexual relationship well, right? And so it's like, it's, I think, I think symbols matter. And so there, I think there's some, there's some usefulness there to kind of considering that. Right. Um, but, but what we're trying to do is we're trying to, con to construct an adequate container that can then hold like sort of this powerful fire that we're trying to build between us and like enter into together. Um, so yeah, so this, I think this then naturally leads to, okay, so then as a couple, we've got to be able to talk about this, right? Like you can't just do this like yeah. unconsciously, you know, like, um, so I think this, this leads into some of the other questions that y'all had, um, about, you know, kind of, um, uh, you know, communicating about sex and, and, and whatnot. Um, but before I kind of segue into those, a anything coming up for you with kind of where, where my insides have meandered, uh, with this? No, uh, I love hearing your opinion on it and I think you have a really great opinion on it. Mm. And yeah, no, I definitely, um, I think you made a lot of good points. I definitely, especially about like the container thing too. I really liked that. Mm, um, cool. Cool. Yeah. Good, no, good. I, okay. I think these will help lead into like the next couple questions. Like, cool. Def like going on to the next question, it is so important to talk about sex. Like if, like if you're going to be in this relationship, you have to be able to talk about it. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's like sex is is this um, this lovely and sex and sexual energy and I guess that, and that's maybe a thing to think about here too as we think about talking more about communication, um, uh, communicating with one's partner about sex is it's not just about the act of sex, right? It's a, it's really about that. It's all about that whole spectrum of exchanging sexual energies, which is everything from you know little flirtations to you know you know, various degrees of touch and contact and, and whatnot, you know, up to things, you know, getting into territory that we would more traditionally think of as like, okay, that's some form of sex or sexual intercourse or sexual play or whatever. Um, 